Hello, my lovely people. Happy new working week to each and every one of you. And I pray that anything you lay your hands this week shall be a blessing to you. With this, I welcome you to God's Lost You channel, the home of news. Here we react to all forms of videos, local, international, especially what is happening in Nigeria. If you like this, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. We have come today to react to another interesting video. I want us to listen to what this, our brother news posts. Um, if you want to get more, I would advise you to visit his platform. He is doing very well when it comes to explaining what the Northern and the South Westerners are doing to Biafrans. Let's just sit down and listen. And I would like to hear your own opinion, conclusion in the comment section. Thank you. It don't happen, you don't share it. Nigerians in Lebanon are refusing to come back to Nigeria. Are you surprised that Nigerians are, are saying that instead of us to come back to Nigeria, let us die in Lebanon? So the federal government is complaining. They made provisions to evacuate people from Lebanon to Nigeria. These guys are saying, we don't want to come back to Nigeria. What does that tell you? We have been saying it over and over again. The best thing for this mere geographical expression is for us to go regional or balkanize the country. Because it does not benefit anybody. The name Nigeria don't cast. It acts as a setback to the people that want to travel. When one travels in Nigeria, you know what I'm talking about. Nigerians are rejecting their country in Nigeria. They don't want to come back. They prefer to stay in Lebanon and the drones from Israel finish them. They want that. That is what they want. So we have been saying it over and over again that Nigeria needs another restructuring and that restructuring must come as fast as possible. For those that are playing propaganda, for those that are manipulative, for those that are lying to themselves that Nigeria is one, have you heard it? Some people came over the weekend and they, they were saying Tinubu is stepping in the footsteps of Abiola and Awolowo. And they were being abused by Yorubas. This Yoruba APC from the Southwest came out together and endorsed Tinubu and invoked the spirit of Abiola and Awolowo to support Tinubu. They believe that Tunubu can do, mm, can take Nigeria to the next level. Remember, you have like seven years remaining, or let's say six years remaining. I know Tunubu is going to do his eight years. All these ones that people are saying, see, it's not, I, I have no apology for anybody. Look at what Fubara did in River State. Without the police, they conducted the elections and a party, a strange party, won everything. This is a template for politicians now. Politicians know what they are going to do. So for that Tinubu spending eight years, just lock up. Lock up. Anybody that is going to come out to contest in 2007 is just doing acrobatics. Well, that is my opinion. If the European nation would not speak up now that they need to balkanize the country, that they have the opportunity supporting Tunubu to balkanize the country. That should be their motive. That should be the propaganda they need to push. Not pushing propaganda on Igbos. You see, at the end of the day, the Europeans are going to get, get what they have dished out to other Nigerians at the end of eight years. If Tunubu does not succeed in bringing in regional system of government and balkanizing the country. I was ashamed that you are. I'm ashamed. I want war, although what Awolowo has in common with Tunubu is tribalism. Awolowo was one of the most tribal politicians in the history of Nigeria. Awarawa, Awarawa. If you hear Awarawa, you remember Awolowo. He was the father of tribal politics. The politics he played against Nambi Azikiwe. So they might have that in common. Because Tinubu, under Tinubu's regime, we have seen officially some people have come out to denigrate a certain tribe. And we are watching from the rear. You see, I want to, I don't want to believe that it is typical of a Yoruba person to be, to have, to lie, manipulate. I don't want to believe that. 
I've studied Yoruba people, it's not typical of them, although it might be in their culture, to throw banters. They say a lot of things. They are outspoken. The culture is outspoken. When you look at their music, it's outspoken. They are a kind of outspoken tribe. And maybe it has resulted from, for them carrying all sorts of blackmail propaganda against the Igbo people. Look at somebody came out and said it wasn't Chino Achebe that wrote Things Fall Apart. See, pushing those propaganda, we just thank God that social media have solved so many things. Social media have solved so many things. If not for social media, that person, you know, the Southwest are in control of the media. Yes, if not for the social media, we'll have been hearing all sorts, and that will have become our history. And that will, when they say it con continuously, when they keep on saying it, saying it, saying it, it becomes true. It becomes the fact. So the, 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 the evil that they perpetrated on saying it's Iboku, 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 they kept on saying it. Their intellectuals put it in books. Their generals from the Southwest put it in books. The Northerners, it was a... Con uh, uh, the North and South, the, it, was a, it was a joint thing against the people. They put it in their records, they put it in journals, they put it in newspapers, they were saying it on radio, BBC Hausa, they were saying it. So the lies they were propagating, when they said it over a long time, it now became their reality. So the young people that grew with them now grew to uh, see the liars true. They had been lying to their children over the idiots, Iboku. Somebody would say, My father said, Your father was lying. It was a propaganda. You carried on the propaganda against these people. If they tell you, if we don't have somebody saying Tunumbu is doing the legacy of Awolowo has been passed on to Tunumbu, who told you? We cannot ascertain his genealogy. We cannot ascertain his academic qualification and where he worked. Everything is becoming a mystery. Is that typical of a Yoruba person? A Yoruba person, youngster, that has three master's degree or two PhD, young guys are doing well academically under our world's legacy. Under our world's legacy. But under Timu's legacy, what has he been able to achieve? When you go on the streets, see, it is not coming online to start bamboozling or saying once, once, one. See, those baby grammar does not count. Go on the streets and do your practical. Meet an average Yoruba man, a Southwesterner. Engage that Southwesterner. You know that this region, the leaders have taken it backward when it comes to education. When you see statistics now, I was even surprised that the Igbos are the ones that are leading in education, despite the fact that the federal government has refused to invest in education. UNN uh, lecturers, most of them have not been paid. So it's a deliberate thing to draw this Southeast backward, but yet, they are becoming the best in education. While the Southwest has, has advantaged or at an advantageous position, they are still backward because some people decided to put out a legacy that would destroy education in the Southwest. Look at Ekiti. We have so many professors in Ekiti, but it's not as productive as Ijebu. You know the Ijebu? These, are, these guys are multinationals, nationals, industrialists. Ekiti is just they speak English, English at the end of the day, nothing to show for it. Because we have seen people with no traceable history, with no traceable and verifiable, uh, become leaders in Southwest. And some miscreants, Southwest APC, are endorsing a Tinubu into Awolo's legacy. The only thing Awolo and Tinubu has together is that they are playing tribal politics. Under Tinubu's regime, Tinubu's regime, tribalism got to 90% against the Igbos. Under Awolo's regime, it was something around 60, 70. So that's the only similarity they have, tribal politics. And the tribal politics Tinubu is playing is a politics that favors the elite, his, his allies, the Lagos boys. It does not cut across. You see, when you look at distribution of wealth in the Southwest and distribution of wealth in the Southeast, it is there are two different things. We have very, very rich Southwesterners that are richer than any Igbo, known Igbo billionaire. We have the, uh, the likes of Otedola, we have the, uh, uh, the, the, the Glowman, we have some other persons that I don't know, but 
it is not evenly distributed amongst the southwesterners but when you go to Igbo land many millionaires many billionaires in the southwest few billionaires many people that are poor look at what happened when we were sharing bread in lagos island lagos island was the epicenter of innovation epicenter of development in nigeria but at that same place see how underdeveloped they are tunubu took the development to lekki to lekki where you have the average yoruba man does not cannot afford the development Tinubu is bringing, those developments, Paris, Peninsula, all those places that they are building, the refinery and everything, it can be afforded by the elite, not the people. But when you go to Igbo land, many, many millionaires, people are independent, there are many, it is spread, it is, it is, it cuts across. You can have a stinkingly rich Yoruba man. Let's say we have 10 Yoruba people, we have 10 Igbo persons. And we have a very, very rich Yoruba person amongst the ten. Very rich. Or then maybe two other persons may not be as rich as a Yoruba person. But in that Igbo, out of that ten persons, you see seven rich, but not too rich, like the first Yoruba man. See, it is, we, we have many people that are empowered in the Southeast, while the Southwest is lacking. That is the legacy of Tunubu. A Tunubu is so rich that you cannot get close to his riches. Why we have millions of Southwesterners that are wallowing in poverty. But that was not the case of Awolowo. Awolowo had a legacy. He educated the Southwest. Most of the first the, the, the development the Southwest had, he used Coco to develop the Southwest. What is Tunubu doing with the Southwest? Now, when you talk about the Southwest, you see Lagos, 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 Lagos. Nobody talks about the development in other states. Everybody is just going to Lagos. Tunubu, with all his influences, why can't he extend, extend that development to Ogun State, or your state, or Shun State? Everybody is Lagos because Lagos, at a point, was was developed first by the colonial masters. It was an attraction point. When they say Lagos is no man's land, Jack on they said it. They understand what they were saying. If Tunubu had a legacy, let that legacy be shown in Oshun State. Let's see the legacy in Okun State. But nothing. You only have people that are privileged having this access to, because he's the president now, he's giving his allies and their families, the rich, the upper class, access to whatever. Why do you? Because we don't send everybody who hustle and make their money. We, don't, we are not dependent on seizing power and using power to arrange ourselves. The legacy Tunubu leaves for the Southwest is let's seize power and use power to reach ourselves. No entrepreneurship legacy. Building industries that will last for generations. Look at Glow. All these people are leveraging on the influence they have in government. No, very few of them build industries from scratch, like Igbos. Igbos are building businesses from scratch and they get to a certain level. How many of these guys that are Tunumu boys? We have Yorubas that have built industries. They have built legacies with business and everything. But how many of these people with Tunumu have a business they built from scratch? If not, they leverage on federal government influence. That's how they make their money. What is the business Tunumu do? Some people will tell you that they worked in mobile. No, what business did he do? So he cannot step in the shoes of even, even an Abiola. Not talk of. Awolowo. Awolowo is not Tungu's mate. Don't, well, it does not concern me. What concerns me is, thank God some Southwesterners, their eyes have opened. Have their, they have seen the APC and Tunubu for what they are. I don't see Tunubu as a Yoruba man. I don't see him as somebody who can represent the Yoruba people and what they stand for. If there's a Yoruba nation today, Tunubu stands no chance. I've repeated it and I'm continue, I will continue repeating it. So it concerns them. But what we want, Nigerians are rejecting the country, Nigeria. Imagine, I'm in a place whereby missiles are flying. Missiles are flying. I can die at any time. I prefer to commit suicide than to go back to Nigeria. You know what it is? 
Then some people will come online and start bamboozling, start saying all sorts of things, blah, blah, blah. The only people that want to want Nigeria, they are egos. Because they are everywhere and they are doing well. They are contributing to the GDP of every state they find themselves. If you go to any state in Nigeria, the largest ethnic groups, first three largest ethnic group in any state in Nigeria, you will likely see the Igbo. In Lagos, after the Yorubas, Igbos. No, we are not talking about after the indigenous of Lagos. So. The Igbos are much more than the indigenous of Lagos. No? Let's say Yorubas collectively. If you go to Ekiti, Oshu, wherever you find, Igbos are more, you have the, that, the more reason why, when it comes to election, they will intentionally make sure that this voter card does not get to these guys. When you have a name like Chukudi and these guys at INEC, hmm, you will find it difficult to get your voter's card because if Igbos, eh, most Igbos had voter, voter's card and were willing to come out to vote, you don't beat them at election. If they, if they really come out to vote and defend their vote, the Igbos will vote in anybody and vote out anybody because they are spread all over the country. They are the ones that want, want a one Nigeria. But these charlatans, Igbo politicians, they are charlatans, Yoruba politicians, Hausa and Fulani politicians, they are charlatans. These charlatans don't want a one Nigeria. They want a Nigeria that will not work and they will be benefiting. On the dead bodies, on the hunger, on the hardship, they are benefiting. If Nigeria works today, it will not be to their advantage. I've repeated this over and over again. If Nigeria works today, it will not be to their advantage. That's why so many people just have to go through the desert, leave Nigeria because of the evil and the suffering by these leaders. You say Igbos don't have leaders. We don't take rubbish from anybody. We don't worship worship who? Like some I know these Southwesterners, Southwest APC, they are playing politics, what they are doing. They believe that Tinubu can rescue Nigeria. That's how they everybody quite quiet under Buhari. When we are attacking Buhari, we are saying that we don't want Nigeria to succeed. Uh, we are attacking this. We are, after Buhari, where are we today? And still, they are doing the same with a Tunubu. Well, Tunubu and his gang have, have succeeded in rendering most Yorubas as paupers. I'm not saying what I don't know. I say go on the streets, engage an average Yoruba person, engage like 20 people, and get the response you get on the street. Do you see how they have relegated the Southwesterners? Such were those days. Our leaders those days, when they come out and speak, you know that these people were educated. These people were sound. Not somebody that does not have a verified, somebody that just from nowhere, some, from nowhere you just make him your leader. And some people are going to endorse him under the legacy. God forbid, which legacy of uh, our law? You cannot. We are speaking against it. You cannot. You just have eight years so that you pack a load. I, 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 I said something. I'm predicting. APC will not last more than 20 years. APC is going to balkanize. And it's going to be from within. They are going to destroy themselves. This legacy that Tinubu is bringing does not stand the test of time on a national basis. You can put this legacy in Lagos. Because Lagos is no man's land. That's why even the indigenous of Lagos are being subdued. Because it's no man's land. You can't take that legacy to an Oshun state, and you stay for 23 years, Tinubu cannot do that in Oshun state. You can't do that in Ogun state. Go to Ogun state. Okay, let Tinubu, okay, go to Ogun state and start controlling the politics, policy for 23 years. You cannot do it. Why was able to do it in Lagos? Because Lagos is no man's land. They came from their indigenous states and occupied Lagos and took advantage of the indigenous of Lagos. And because they are all Yorubas, they started doing what they can do. So, your legacy, hmm? legacy, Agbado economies, Agberoism, uh, grab it, snatch it, grab it, snatch it, and run with it. Agbado economy, eh? wide taxation, just tax, tax, no productivity. Because all these guys, they have not been productive. There's no, from right, right from the onset, you don't see any means of productivity. They're only taxing. Taxing, taxing, making you suffer, taking advantage. 
doing collaborations with people that you know what they do when they get into power they can't build an enterprise they look for people outside as they will bring into the country eh? have this partnership with them they all just want to make money let, let them those people be creative and produce they just want to make money that's why they want to be in power by all means because of power some people will not say the truth because of power or because they are Yoruba or they are brides in power some people will spit against the truth thank God and Adeboye apologize but I cannot talk against Adeboye because we are all human beings and we can make mistakes so if you think that Tunubu can stand in the shoes the place I will stood you must be having issues with your, with your cerebellum and for those Nigerians that are not willing to come back to Nigeria please wherever you are call out the government let's restructure re restructure this country I'm looking towards a Biafra that's what I'm looking towards I don't know any other thing I have looked at it front back there's nothing that will work if not let's say regionalism from the regionalism and here we talk about balkanization there's nothing else that will work there's nothing else that will work and it is important you know that the Igbo tribe are the people eh, who God has blessed no man can cause.